Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, my name is Joseph. I've been with The Vine for a little over or around four years, so it's been a long time. Um, but yeah, the Lord has something for you guys tonight. I'm wearing my pastor shirt, my youth pastor shirt. What do you think? Oversized tee. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so tonight we're talking about hearing God for others. Um, another name for that is um, the gift of prophecy. And we're going to go into that tonight. The Lord's going to uh, bless you all through the time of adoration. Hopefully through my talk, hopefully the Holy Spirit is, is already moving. And he is moving right now. So we're just going to get into it. Um, next slide. So what is the gift of prophecy? The gift of prophecy um, is a charismatic gift given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's given to us uh, during our baptism, right? Through the power and the waters of baptism, we are also immersed in the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift of prophecy, um, in layman's term, is when the Holy Spirit, God the Father's heart, is imprinted on ours, um, and he speaks through us for an individual or for a group of individuals, um, for their upbuilding, um, for their increase in faith in God, um, that they can grow closer to the Lord, and for a lot of other reasons, but those are the ones that we're going we're gonna to stick with now. Um, yeah, and how do you go about delivering this, uh, how you go about asking for a prophetic word for someone. So as Kara and how we do every week, we ask, come Holy Spirit. Uh, the catechism talks about when we say that we're inviting the Holy Spirit um, into our hearts, into our lives, into our minds, into our souls. And um, we're kind of weeding out ourselves, right? We don't want ourselves um, in the midst, but we want God speaking through us for a group of people or uh, for just an individual, even just for ourselves, we ask, come Holy Spirit, uh, for really any situation, because we want God in every situation of our lives. Uh, so that's just how we start. We say, come Holy Spirit, God, what are you speaking for um, this individual? God, what are you speaking for this group of individuals? Um, and the Lord's words are spirit and life, right? Jesus says that, my words are spirit and life. That means it comes from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was was given to us by God the Father, and that looks like the Father's heart. The Father's heart is love. The Father's heart is peace. The Father's heart is life. Um, it's not confusion. It's not anxiety. It doesn't, um, yeah, cause disunity amongst a person. Uh, and and they may, when you give a word to someone, they may have anxiety or a little bit of angst, but that may be something they're dealing with with their relationship with God, um, and it's and it's on us. It's on you guys to be obedient to the word that the Father has put into your heart uh, for an individual or for a group of individuals. And um, yeah, but the Father's heart is imprinted on us. And when we're operating in the gift of prophetic, when we're hearing the voice of the Father for the people around us, um, it's always from from his, his heart. Um, and this can look like a, a couple of different things. Uh, this can look like images. Uh, so maybe like a, a sunrise, a sunset, Jesus walking on the beach with a bunch of lambs. I don't know. The Father uses anything um, that glorifies him, that brings people closer to him. He can use a, a lot of different things. Um, so like a word or a phrase that you feel like the Father is speaking for someone. Um, I'll just give a quick example. So like Andy, I feel like the Father is speaking that... Um, the man of St. Joseph is really, is really important in your life. Uh, the way you've chased after his um, chastity and purity. Um, so that's just a, just a little example of what that could look like. Um, that's a building. That's encouraging. Um, it follows the teachings of the Catholic Church. Um, so just like a, a word or a phrase. Um, it can also look like scripture. I think that's a very easy one uh, that we can pray into when we're, when we're praying for someone or when we're praying for a body of people is scripture, right? The, my words are spirit and life. Nothing is better than the truth that comes from, from sacred scripture. And uh, that can just be an amazing tool when we are, when we are praying for someone, when we are trying to bring someone closer to the Lord um, is scripture. And another thing is this, is, this is just one of them, but like a gift, uh, you can give someone a prophetic gift. Uh, you can ask God the Father, God, what should I give this person? Maybe for Christmas, family, what do you want to give them? And um, asking God the Father, even for the smallest things like a Christmas gift or a Christmas present can change someone's life. 
Um, just a quick story about that. My sister-in-law, uh, yeah, I recently got married. Woo-hoo, pray for me, pray for me. Um, so recently got married, and this past Christmas, I had a dream that my sister-in-law, and we were talking, she's like, hey, Joseph, have you prayed today? This is all in a dream. And I'm like, no. And she's like, oh, we should go pray. And so we go, and I bring her to my table, and I have all my stuff. I have my Bible, and Divine Mercy Chaplet, my rosary, St. Faustina Diary. I have all this stuff, and she's like, um... And I was like, uh, what, what do you want to pray with? And she picked the rosary in, in my dream. I wake up, blah, 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 and I'm like, oh, should I get her a rosary? I don't know. I don't want to be pushing the, shoving Catholicism down her throat. I don't know, whatever. And so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll step out in faith. And I went and bought the rosary. I gave it to her, and I told her about the dream. And she was like, that's so crazy, because I was just talking with my friend how I wanted to start praying the rosary, and I've never done that before. Um, and it, it's... And it's just a, a testament that the Lord can use anything. The Lord can use our dreams. The Lord uses our imagination, our creativity, our creativity for his glory. Um, so that's just like a small little thing that I've experienced where I was like, I don't know. I'll step out in faith. I'll trust you, Lord. Um, and we'll, we'll see where it leads. We're going to see where it leads. All right, next slide. Uh, so who does it benefit? You guys like my little images up here. Um, so as the church teaches, as St. Paul teaches, uh, the gift of prophecy is for the upbuilding of the people around us and for, uh, the church. And so that's the main one. It can, it can lead people closer to the Lord. It can bring back lost souls back to the father. Um, it can like wipe away doubt, uh, that someone has about the relationship with God or the relationship with other people and, and refulfill it with God's love and God's peace and God's presence. Um, yeah, so the main, the main objective is, is to, to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you have for this person? And uh, discern what that is with the Holy Spirit and bring them closer to the Lord uh, through the Holy Spirit's words. Um, another person, I don't know if benefits the right word, but I would say it gives glory to God. When we step out in faith, it, it says, God, I trust that your Holy Spirit is inside of me. I trust that you're working uh, in me. I trust the graces of baptism. I trust the graces that you are pouring out to me constantly. And I'm putting on the throne of my life. I say, God, you're worthy of my uncomfortability, right? Giving, talking about this is, is hard. It can be uncomfortable. Hey, God, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong about this prophetic word? Um, but it shows that you trust in the Lord and it shows that you're willing to put your um, fear of man, fear of other people, a fear of being wrong on the line for God. Um, and that really honors God, that really glorifies him um, because you care more about him and, and what he's doing and what he's spoken in your life uh, than how you look uh, to the people around you. So it glorifies God. Yay, that's awesome. Um, and then it helps you out. I mean, it just, it just strengthens your relationship with the Lord. When you step out in risk, when you step out in boldness, um, it, just, it just shows the Lord that you trust him. Um, and it, like, it allows you to hear the Father's voice better. It allows you to know his voice. It allows you, um, yeah, just to, to get familiar with his voice, not only for other people, but for yourself as well. So, um, yeah, we'll go to the next one. Uh, so lies and questions you guys may have uh, about this topic. Um, I would say the first one I think that I struggled with after I received, like the Lord was like, uh, I have to be perfect to um, operate in the charismatic gift of prophecy. Not only in the charismatic gift of prophecy, but all gifts. Um, and like, oh, to pray with people, I have to be perfect. Um, and that's that's a lie. The Lord called sinners uh, to preach his gospel and spread his message. He didn't, he didn't call the perfect. Uh, he didn't call saints. There's no prerequisite that we have to have to operate within the charismatic gifts. Um, they're gifts from the Lord. We didn't earn them. There's nothing we could do to earn them. He bestowed them upon us lovingly. And um, yeah, you don't, you don't have to be perfect. These gifts are for you. Not only the gift of prophecy, uh, but all the charismatic gifts are, are for you. Um, and yeah, uh, another question one may have is, 
Uh, Joseph, what if I don't hear the Lord's voice myself? And when I was in high school, this would have been my question. Uh, Joseph, I don't even hear the Lord's voice for myself. Um, how, how do you expect me to hear it for other people? And what I say to that is the Lord sees you in that. He sees you in the midst, and he does want to speak to you. Um, there will be a time of adoration tonight, and I just invite you all to uh, earnestly and intentionally ask the Lord, Lord, I, I want to hear your voice. I want Thank you, Keith. Woo. Um, geez, what? Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, we're good. We're good. Okay, okay. Um, Jesus will be present in the most holy sacrament. And um, I just invite you guys, if, if that's you, that's okay. Um, that was me for a lot of high school. I was going to youth group all the time, and I couldn't hear the Father's voice um, until a time of worship and, and adoration. And someone prayed over me, actually. Um, so there's just an invitation tonight that if... If that's you, if you can't hear the Father's voice for yourself, intentionally ask him. Come before him in adoration. Jesus, I want to hear your voice. I want to know what your voice sounds like. Um, so there's just that uh, invitation if you if you feel like you can't hear the Lord's voice for yourself. Um, another question you guys may have, what if it's just my thoughts and uh, not the Father speaking? And I think my answer to that is, Trust that the Lord is speaking and working in your life. Um, I think he would rather you trust in him and trust in his graces that he's bestowed to all of you through the power of the Holy Spirit than to shy away and be like, Thanks, Keith. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the Lord delights that when we when we trust in Him and we trust that He's speaking to us, um, then being like, oh, I don't know if I should really give that word. Um, and God uses our imagination. He uses our creativity. He uses our mind, our intellect, our memories, um, our experiences for His greater glory. Uh, and that that's that's speaking in the prophetic. That's telling people about. Um, that's, that's operating through the Holy Spirit, um, on behalf of God through, for another person. Um, yeah, he made us in his, in his image and likeness. Um, and that includes our mind, that includes our conscious. And that, that was a, that was a helpful tool for me because that was one of my main questions is, how do I know it's just not Joseph rambling on in his mind? Um, but God uses our creativity. God uses our, our knowledge of scripture. We don't have to know the whole Bible in order to share a prophetic word. Um, but he uses what, what he's given us already uh, for his glory. Uh, another question, why does God want to speak through me when he can just directly speak to this person? Uh, and sometimes in life, we get in a rut. Sometimes we're going through stuff, stress, anxiety, school, family stuff, whatever it may be. And um, yeah, through, through no fault to God's, we put God on the back burner and maybe we don't go receive the sacraments, or maybe we don't go to church, and we're just in a tough spot. It doesn't be, have to be that severe, and that's why we have community around us, so we have people on God's behalf speaking to us. I know, like, when, when I have a tough spot, when I'm in a tough situation, um, spiritually, or, yeah, just with life, I say, hey, I grab some of my closest brothers, and I'm like, hey, I'm dealing with this, can you pray about it? Or I tell my wife, hey, I'm dealing with this, can you pray about it? And they go to God for me and ask God, what do you want to say to Joseph? Um, and when that happens, peace is brought to the situation. New life is brought to the situation. Um, Jesus' resurrection power is brought to the situation. And that's, that's why God speaks to uh, other people on, on our behalf. That's why God uses us for other people's behalf is to bring them closer to him, which is just, just amazing. Um, because yeah, it was awesome. All right. Next slide. Um, yeah, and I was, as I was praying, 
Lord just brought me to John the Baptist, one of the greatest prophets. Um, yeah, and the the scripture is, uh, I'm the voice crying out in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord. Uh, and I just, yeah, I was praying about it. And I feel like there's, it's twofold. That the Lord uh, sees some people who, yeah, just feel like they're crying out to the wilderness. They feel like they're crying out um, to people around them, to family members, uh, to school, to classmates. Um, they're crying out for this invitation to receive more of the Lord. And they're just not getting it. God, why aren't they getting it? And the Lord, Lord sees you in that. And as we talked a little bit about last week, uh, hope. Hope in God does not disappoint us. Hope in God. Hope in the resurrection. Hope in Jesus coming back again. That does not disappoint. And those prayers and every time we invite them into a greater relationship with the Lord, um, the Lord fulfills that. The Lord fulfills that in his own manner. Um, so the Lord sees you if you're crying out to those people in the wilderness, uh, just like John the Baptist. Uh, another important thing that John the Baptist was amazing at is he got out of the way for the Lord. Um, he stepped aside as Jesus was coming and said, behold, the lamb of God. Um, and as you guys step into this gift of a prophecy and hearing God for others, you step out of the way for the Lord. You're calling upon the Holy spirit and you're, you're showing a group of people or an individual, the Lord, the lamb of God, right? Just like John the Baptist. Um, so that's just a, an encouragement as we step into it. It's not. It's not what they want to hear. It's not what John the Baptist wanted to preach. Um, but he stepped out of the way for the Lord and, and, and preached repentance. He preached uh, repent and believe in the good news. And maybe you're called to say that to some people. I don't know. Um, but the Lord is calling you to speak something to the people around you and uh, to speak, behold, the Lamb of God to them. Um, and then on the other half, um, this is where I was in high school, like I said, but um, you are like in the wilderness. You don't hear God's voice. You don't know what his voice sounds like. And yeah, just, just what I want to reiterate is that God wants to speak to you tonight. Um, he wants you to know his voice. He wants you to uh, be aware of what uh, his voice sounds like. He wants you to be familiar with it. Uh, he wants you to um, yeah, get to know it very well. Uh, just a couple of things of encouragement before we wrap up here is that when we're operating in this gift, um, God wants his sons and daughters back. And this is a beautiful gift that the Lord has given to us that we are able to do that. We're able to do this out of love, right? Lord says, if you do all these things in my name and you don't have love, it is for nothing. Um, so as we operate in this gift, it is not for our glory um, but it is to bring other people closer to the Lord. It is to bring lost souls back to the Father. Um, and when it's done out of love, it's done beautifully. It's, it, it brings lost souls back. Um, and this is, yeah, we're just going to have a time of adoration, time of worship here in a little bit. Um, so I just, I just invite you guys, uh, we're going to make a little prayer. Um, so if you just want to close your eyes and, um, yeah, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this night. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and what you say about us. Thank you, Lord, for speaking over this room. Thank you for being here in our midst. Jesus, I ask that anyone who hasn't even heard the Father's voice for themselves, Lord Jesus, I just ask that you open their ears. Jesus, I ask that anyone who's been crying out in the wilderness uh, to hear God's voice for themselves, um, their heart may be open, their eyes may be open to see you, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I just ask that you pour out a newfound uh, gift of, of prophecy uh, for the upbuilding of the church and everyone in this room and friends, families, may you draw closer to the Lord. Um, Jesus, we love you. We put you on the throne of our hearts tonight. We ask that you bless us in your most holy name. Amen.